Welcome to another episode of Character Evolution Cast. We are really excited to share this one with you. We don't have a guest today, but this is a topic that we both really are passionate about, and we can't wait for you to hear it. But first, a few announcements as usual. And if you are not listening to the Pandas Talking Games show, that last week's episode actually covers uh, some oh. things for Session Zero that are not being covered in this current episode. So head on over to the Pandas Talking Games feed and check out Senda and Phil talking about how they tackle a Session Zero, which is really interesting. Yeah, it's always good to get multiple viewpoints. And yeah, we only had so much time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's only so many hours in a day. There are a lot of different techniques out there, and it's really interesting to see all the different ones. And they cover a different technique that I was not aware of before we created this episode. So uh, check it out. It's a great supplement for what we're going to be talking about coming up soon. Yeah, and we'll put a link to that in our show notes, too. If you enjoyed our Spire series and want to know more about that amazing world and a game that Amelia's everywhere are calling definitely my favorite, the <laughs> Strata Kickstarter is now live and it has already funded and met several stretch goals, including mm -hmm. a couple additional adventures and some new art. Some of the backer tiers also include a copy of the core book, so it's a good time to get everything you need in one go. We will put a link in the show notes, or you can go to Kickstarter and search for Strata. Yeah, I am super excited. Don't be like me in the past and miss out on this because uh, me in the present is all over this. It's a real good game. It's a real good game. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of good games, uh, we will both be at a Catacon in Dayton, Ohio, November 9th through the 11th. Come and say hi to us. Uh, attend our panel and play games. A bunch of other great people will be there, including folks from the One Shot Network, and of course the RPG Academy Network, and even a number of people you've heard on our show. We will put a link to the website in our show notes. And whether you can hang out with us at a Catacon or not, we would still love to talk to you. You can follow us on Twitter at CreationCast and participate in our Tuesday and Friday character creation prompts, or you can head over to our Discord, where we talk about pretty much everything. And you can find that at discord.charactercreationcast.com. And speaking of hearing from you, we'd love to know what you think of the show. We love reading your reviews and all the other feedback that you share. And it really makes this experience a million times better. All right, Ryan has a baby in, in his little studio with him. She's making squeaky noises, so I get to read the review. Ha ha ha. <laughs> it's titled Worth Every Listen by Duke Luke from Singapore. The show format allows its hosts and guests to deep dive into technical analysis of the system while still having fun and being welcoming to its listeners. Every month is a journey into a different system, some familiar and some more obscure, but all of which are thoroughly discussed. Character creation is, as expected, examined in great details, but Amelia and Ryan also go to great length to talk with their guests about options for character evolution and how well these mechanics fit the game's other elements, such as themes and atmosphere. Their guests all love and know the system they play inside and out, so it's a blast to listen to. But don't let that fool you into thinking they would blindly defend the system. Many constructive criticisms of each system can be gained from listening to their experience, which helps if you're something of a designer yourself. To top it all off, the hosts are some of the most lovely people with very pleasant voices in the RPG podcast world. It's worth every listen. That was super nice and very thorough. <laughs> that was very thorough. We, we appreciate love it. reviews like that. Yes, so much. And with all of that out of the way, here is the episode. <laughs> Welcome to Character Evolution Cast, a show where we discuss what to do with all those characters we just made. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and today my co-host Ryan and I are sitting down by ourselves. What? I don't understand. Yeah. 
Well, we've chosen to do this episode without guests because it is simply something that we are both really passionate about and very excited to discuss. So we will skip some of the initial getting to know you stuff this episode and dive right in because we have a lot to talk about today. Are you sure you don't want to like get to know each other a little bit? Wow. We should like let people get to know us. I... Hey, Ryan, what's your favorite part of a session zero? Oh, my favorite part of session zero is figuring out what everybody likes to do in the game. Oh, I thought you were going to say character creation and I'm really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Character creation. You blew it. You blew it. Well, you had okay, one I've, job. I, I have literally, okay, aside from every episode that we've done so far on this podcast, not had an official session zero for a role-playing game before. Whoa. Yeah. Dude. It's, it's all been, well, okay, there's one shot, but that's like the whole session. But Fair. also, for any campaigns, it's always been... Make your characters, come to the table with your characters and a little bit of a background, and we will make sure to fit you into the adventure somehow. Well, today we're going to talk about why that's not the best way to do stuff. Exactly. Or why it's, in my opinion, not the best way to do stuff. Correct. I don't want to tell anybody that they're doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. but If you are so. having fun not having a session zero, feel free to keep doing that, but... Please listen, and we hope that you take away something really awesome that you can bring to your group and hopefully even enhance your game and have even more fun. I agree. Now you have to ask me what my favorite part is. What is your favorite part, Amelia? <laughs> or you can ask me a different question. It's okay. Up to you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's right there, and we haven't heard the answer yet. Amelia, okay. what is your favorite part for session zero? Actually, it's setting up expectations for the game. I should say character creation after I just gave you all of that. I'm highly disappointed that. that you didn't say character creation, Amelia. Garbage for it, but, <laughs> well, that answer was already taken, so, <laughs> so I'll say something different. <laughs> um, no, I actually really like the discussion of kind of setting expectations with players and with GMs and getting a feel for what everybody wants to do so that you can have the best possible campaign. That sounds a lot like my first answer before you made me change it. Hmm. Well, it's just because I wanted to have the better answer. <laughs> I guess that's true. Okay. So now, should we get into this? Yes, please. Okay. So I think we need to start by explaining to people, what is a session zero? Basically, a session zero is uh, something that you do with your group, as a group, where you will set expectations for what you will be doing while you're playing your game. Your character creation can happen in a session zero and probably should. At the very least, getting a feel for what characters everybody's going to be playing. And you should be discussing things with your GM in order to make everything kind of fit together. I think that's a pretty solid rundown. Yeah. A lot of games do... I shouldn't say a lot of games. A lot of newer games, I'm noticing, do character creation as its own session they basically have a built-in session zero mm -hmm. so especially i think the common example is like a powered by the apocalypse game oh yeah where you have all of those group questions like all of the relationship questions mm -hmm. and characters are very intertwined you can't do those by yourself and so those are usually part of the actual game is building all of your characters and developing those relationships mm -hmm. and some of them have some world building as part of that yep. That is true to some extent of Powered by the Apocalypse games. I know when I played Descent into Midnight at Gen Con, we did that with that game. Yep. That's a big part of that game is defining the world and actually kind of making up the situation too. Mm -hmm. So that is all done together as a group. Now, I, I'm interested because you said your experience is not making characters like as a group. Correct. So how does that feel different when you go to play a game, have you played a game where you've created characters as a group? You must have because you've played some PBTA stuff. Yeah, we've I, I've played a few PBTA games at last year's Akatacon. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely created characters at the table. And that experience is uh, definitely a lot different than bringing your own characters to the game. Because when you're creating your characters ahead of time, it almost feels like you're banking on your GM having a planned session out a planned story ahead of time 
So you'll make your character, you'll get your single character's details to the GM, and they'll be fitting your character's story into their story somehow ahead of the first session of the game. Yeah. And you know, this is my hill to die on, this is my soapbox, Yeah, that I don't like when when we do that to GMs. I don't mm -hmm. love that expectation that you can just bring whatever you want and yep. the GM will figure it out. Like, that's just really kind of... That's kind of mean, honestly. Yeah. It's just kind of mean to do to your GM. It's definitely an old school mentality, very 90s and earlier sort of gameplay style, because in a lot of those games, the, the GM is effectively God and controls absolutely everything. And the players just care about who they are and maybe makes up some of the NPCs that are in light, in their lives. But then mm -hmm. once the game plays, they have no control over basically anything else. Yeah. So it's building characters together isn't necessarily something I had done a lot of in my previous non-podcasting RPG days. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say that there was one game where we built them together, or I think we kind of roughly outlined what we wanted and then we got together and kind of fleshed everything out so that we could yeah. make sure everybody had relevant skills and all that kind of stuff and now that is we always build them together yeah whether it's like in a chat conversation online or whether we sit down and actually record a real session zero mm -hmm. we do our character creation together yeah in my experience that has led to a much more rich game i think mm -hmm. it's a a more full experience, I think, because I have these really strong connections with the other players at the table. My connection is not solely between me and the GM. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, because I think of it like in the old school games where it's me and the GM and it's Bob and the GM and it's Susie and the GM, mm -hmm. you know, but like none of those people intertwine. Yes. And so I think when you get the chance to sit down and do character creation together, it really lends itself to a, a richer narrative experience. Yeah, 100%. The most recent time I tried to pull a group together, it was a, a few years ago, I tried to do a uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition with my wife and a few of our friends. And we did start trying to do a session zero. And everybody had kind of ideas of what they wanted to do. But once we got to the table to do the session zero, nobody really had a background in mind for mm -hmm. the types of characters. They were like, I want to be this race and I want to be this class, whatever. And so when we started talking about things, we ended up with two of them were sisters and they had some sort of relationship with this other person. And there, you know, like all these other interconnections were happening that would not have happened if everybody submitted their own characters blindly to the GM. Yeah. And that's something that Grant said in our last episode when he talked about building characters as his preferred style was like, I love to be somebody's uncle or cousin or half brother or whatever, because suddenly it, it matters when that person is kidnapped uh -huh. or whatever. It's not just like, oh, well, yep. sorry for that guy. That sucks. It, like, it, no, I have now this vested interest in your outcome, too. Yeah. You're not some rando that I met on the street. It instantly ups the stakes of every group dynamic as soon as you introduce two of the player characters or family members or, or even like in a romantic relationship or something like that. Absolutely. If you have that sort of strong dynamic right off the bat, these characters care about each other and you're not going to be wanting to think, oh, well, my character would probably not want to join up with this random group of people and risk their lives for this thing that they don't care about. Right. Yeah, that's always been such a weird trope to me. It's like, why would I just go run off with these strangers? Mm -hmm. Like, maybe that's me as a modern woman. It's like, I would not go anywhere with people <laughs> I don't know, especially if they have swords. Definitely that's a no. But maybe I could suspend some disbelief, but not that much. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's no reason to just go do those things. It's not plausible. Exactly. Which I know plausibility has no place in role playing games. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that there's it, it does, in my opinion, lead to a, a better narrative experience for sure. And I, I think even if narrative gaming isn't your if narrative isn't your preferred kind of fun, mm -hmm. There's a lot to be said for being able to maximize things yeah. in a game, too, if you build characters together. Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy to say, 
I have this skill. You don't also need that skill. Yes. You know, or to like make sure that when you're going over what the campaign's going to be about, that you're picking things that are actually relevant to that because that's mm-hmm. a really important part of session zero too is getting an idea of what kind of game you're going to be playing. Yeah, exactly. I strongly suggest that that's a great time for GMs to give their players a sort of elevator pitch mm-hmm. for what this campaign is because you can go into a game of D&D and it could be anything. It can like, be, That's yeah. a wide open mm-hmm. slate. You know, it's a big sandbox world and you have no idea what kind of D&D game you're going to be playing, mm-hmm. what skills are going to be relevant. And there's nothing worse than showing up with this fully made character with this beautiful fleshed out backstory and none of it matters uh-huh. because nothing ever comes up. Yeah. And so, like I said, even if narrative isn't your thing, there's something to be said for the inner power gamer in some of us that it's to your benefit to maximize things that way too by knowing what this game is even about. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And what's great is... The GM can come in having an idea of what they want for the storyline or for their overarching campaign, but as players in a session zero, you start getting some direct input into the going-ons in the world, and that might actually even reshape some of what the GM was planning to do in the first place. Which Absolutely. Which really, it, it makes the game more more deep. I guess, story-wise? Yeah, more engaging. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I, I think that that's, that's a thing that I really want to stress for players that are listening, for people who aren't GMs, which obviously in, is my target audience as a non-GM. This is your time to tell your GM what you want out of a game. Mm-hmm. This is your time to say, here are the things that I like. Go back and listen to our Eight Kinds of Fun episode and figure out what your kind of fun is. Yeah. And like this is the time to talk about that with your GM, to say, here is what a great game looks like for me. Mm -hmm. And as a GM, this is a great time to get an idea of what will make your players happy. Mm -hmm. Because I think you're going to, everybody's going to have a better time if you're all engaging with the story and with the characters and what's going on in Mm -hmm. the world. And I think this is the perfect opportunity to sit down and say, Here's what I want. Exactly. Here's how we can make this the best. Because the last thing that you want as a player is, say, none of the players, maybe one player, really, really loves tactical combat. So you've got one player that loves it, but everybody else is, ugh, why, why do we have to pull out the grid map again? But nobody voices that opinion at all until it's far too late. Mm-hmm. The GM could have this fully tactical battle after battle sort of game with minimal RP. But if you don't ever voice your opinions, if you don't ever have this sort of session, you're going to just get stuff fed to you that you might not like. Yeah. I mean, this is a life lesson that I tell people all the time. You can't fix a problem that you don't know about. Mm Mm-hmm. And so it, the same goes for GMing and for playing. If nobody says what they want or what they don't want, I can't fix it. I can't yeah. help you. So this is your time. Again, it's my soapbox. It's my hill to die on. <laughs> but you as a player have the power to say, these are things that I want. These are, you know, this is what I want a game to look like. Mm-hmm. And you should. Role-playing games, the group that you are playing with is a kind of relationship Mm -hmm. and communication is super important. And essentially, that's what a good session zero should be. It should be the first date of your RPG relationship. (laughs) It is a good time to get to know the players, even if you know the people already, to kind of talk about what their play styles are, Mm because you could be friends with somebody for years and not know what kind of player they are get to know the characters that they're playing talk about the system the setting talk about the specifics of what you like and what you don't do you Mm -hmm. want long walks on the beach or do you want tactical (laughs) combat this is the place to do it this is your that's my my tagline here is it is the first date of your rpg relationship Mm -hmm. and if you are hesitant on approaching your gm about uh, the types of things that you enjoy Try having your GM describe in kind of a neat kind of fun sort of way what they were thinking before getting to the actual session zero stuff. So that way you kind of have a baseline of where their mind is and then you can Mm -hmm. add upon that or say, well, 
maybe let's hold off a bit on this portion of that and maybe add a little bit more of this. Definitely. So we've gone into it a little bit, but I, I want to dig deeper about why you should have a session mm-hmm. zero because we've all played games that, I mean, we all, you and I, for sure. I don't know about our <laughs> listeners. I cannot speak for yes. them. But a lot of people have played perfectly lovely campaigns for years and years and years without a session mm-hmm. zero. So I want to talk about why I think that should change, why why this is worth your mm-hmm. time. Because we all know we're all adults and scheduling is tough. I fully understand the desire to jump right in, you know, with both feet and be like, let's get this game yeah. going because I love to mm-hmm. play. And I even I get that way. Like I love I love session zeros. I really do because I think that they improve the game a lot. Mm-hmm. But I'm certainly guilty of that feeling of I want to jump in. I want to play mm-hmm. now. And so I want to just try and stress to people like why this is a valuable use of your time. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that we go over in session zeros, but why should we have session zeros? One of the main and probably biggest things that you should be covering at a session zero is the topic of safety. Role-playing games, literally anything can happen because it's your imaginations. Yep. Some of your friends may be a lot more comfortable with certain content than you are, especially if you have prior experiences with other groups that didn't go so well for certain things. Mm -hmm. So this session zero is an excellent time to bring up safety, things that you are not okay with, things that you're kind of okay with, but rather not go into details and, and other lines and veils that we can talk about here. I think the other thing that I want to stress here is that as much as safety discussions are about things that you don't want, I think that they also should be about things that you do yes. want. And I know I'm just going to keep referencing our other episodes. Don't listen to this episode until you've listened to all of our other episodes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it's something that we definitely talked a lot about with Alex when we did our Star mm-hmm. episodes, that there is no reason that this should be less than the best. Yes. And talking about not only the things that you don't want, but the things that you do want becomes really important in there because process of elimination is great. But like Ryan said, literally anything can happen. So saying I don't want a skateboarding dog doesn't really limit things. Like now we know one thing that you definitely don't want and an infinite number of other possibilities. So if there's something that you feel like, hey, I want this to happen, Session Zero is a really good time for that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's a thing that I, I really want to stress to people is as players, you should find your voice and you should say what you want because you are a valuable part of this process and the game can't happen without players. Exactly. It just can't. I mean, your GM can go play solitaire at home. <laughs> they are important, but you know what? They make GMless games. They don't make playerless mm-hmm. games. So now is your time to say what you want. And I mean, not to say that you can't do that all the other times, but as a player, you have a voice Mm -hmm. and you should be able to say, this is a thing that I'm really passionate about. This is a thing that I definitely don't want. This is a thing I'm kind of iffy on. Find your voice and say it. And honestly, if your GM is not okay with that, I don't know. Like, I feel like that's not... Talk to your GM about being okay with that, I guess. (laughs) Like, I don't want to say don't play in that group, but like, don't play in that group. Right. A lot of times we're going to be playing with some of our closest friends. Right. And that does complicate things. Especially if you've had like past experiences in real life that you're not okay with having those portrayed within the game, but others in your group, and and it could be minor things. It doesn't have to be anything super traumatic, but others in the group that have not had those sorts of experiences might say oh well that's perfectly okay to put into this game and then all of a sudden this thing is in the game and now you are feeling extremely uncomfortable and you're no longer having fun that's a really good point too because i think that we address some of this toward gms and tell players let your gm know these are the things that i'm uncomfortable with but i really want to stress to people that this is a discussion that you should feel okay having with your Mm -hmm. group and i get that there are times that You don't want to tell everybody, and certainly you should feel free to privately talk to your GM. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to air your dirty laundry to everybody. But 
I do think that it's important to try to have some of those discussions with the people in your group, too, because mm-hmm. they're also responsible for the story. I had somebody in a discussion that I was in recently talking about a situation where this came up. A person came to them and said, hey, I've had this traumatic thing happen in my life. Can we just not have that in this Mm -hmm, game? mm -hmm. And the GM said, yep, I don't have anything like that planned. Should be fine. But then another player brought that thing Mm -hmm. in. And that's out of the GM's control. And, you know, they didn't know that that was going to happen. But it's still traumatic for that other player. And so... It's really good to have these kinds of discussions with the whole group so that everybody's on the same page. And that kind of leads into uh, a mechanism sort of discussion, things like the X card and whatnot, where if something does sneak in from a different player that had no idea, somebody, either yourself or if you don't, especially the GM, which you've already told, should hit that card and say, hey, some of us might be uncomfortable with this sort of content. Let's back it up. And do something different. And that shouldn't have to be something that derails the game completely and derails the fun. And it should be something that in a session zero, it's, it's effectively a social contract with you and your friends saying, if this happens, no questions asked, we'll just rewind and get rid of the thing. Right. And we are going to do a whole episode on safety mechanisms in games. We asked people, it's right before Halloween, what they want to talk about. And the answer that won the poll was that people really wanted us to talk about safety mm-hmm. in when you're playing horror kind Especially of games. Horror games so yeah. we're going to sit down. Yeah, we're going to sit down. And next week, we'll have an episode for you on more particulars on those kind of safety mm-hmm. mechanisms. Because I think that that's a thing that definitely warrants its own episode. Oh, yes. We'll talk a little bit about it here. But I... For sure, we're going to get real deep into it. But on that note, I was going to say Session Zero is a good time to establish what those safety mechanisms are going to be on top of just saying, hey, these are my yeses, these are my noes. But it's a good time to set out expectations for people of what is that going to look like if there is an Mm -hmm. issue because you don't always know what's going to come up. And so, like you said, it's a good social contract to say, here's what's expected. Mm -hmm. So aside from safety mechanisms and kind of making everybody feel comfortable at the table, what are other reasons that you should have a session zero? Another great reason, and we hinted at it a little bit earlier, relationships. Getting your characters to like one another when they never knew of each other's existence prior to the first session of your game is really hard and really hard to make believable. You have to have some pretty extraordinary circumstances to say, hey, stranger, let's go adventuring together because we have to save the world together for some reason. Right. We are not all the fellowship of the ring. Exactly. And even the fellowship, there was a lot of people that knew each other well before the fellowship was established. That's true. But still, there is so many examples of different types of games where you just go in and nobody knows each other and you're saving the world the next day and you have to suspend a lot of disbelief in order to get there it still might be super fun but it could be a lot more fun when the joe random person that you're saving is your brother yeah i think that you can have some of those games with the classic you meet in a tavern kind of thing and it can be it can be Mm -hmm. fun i think think that if you're going to do that, that should be part of the story. That you shouldn't try and pretend all of these random people Mm -hmm. are friends. So like, I mean, in my opinion, if I were going to play that game, I would want a central part of that game to be building those relationships. Like I'd want some of that, you know, like, okay, now we're hanging out around this campfire and I don't trust Mm -hmm. you because I've never met you before. And, you know, I would want that to be part of that game. And I think that there's certainly room to do some of that kind of stuff. But Yeah, I mean, my favorite games are games where you establish these kind of relationships with people. I know one of the games I played in in the past, I was supposed to be, my character was supposed to be betrothed to this other character, and we hated each other. (laughs) And so, like, that was really fun to role play is this whole, like, people who are supposed to pretend to be happy together and are not. It's a good in for two characters that otherwise have no reason to hang out. Yeah, and like what you said earlier about forming the relationships in the game itself, that's hard to do sometimes. You have to have a pretty close-knit group and a really on-point GM 
in order to weave everybody's individual stories together. So you're making it a lot harder for yourself. You're making it a lot harder for your GM. And you're putting a lot of overhead on the game that doesn't exactly need to be there. Yeah, definitely. It's something that everybody would need to buy into. Yeah, exactly. And a session zero is a great time to decide if you're going to buy into it that is. or not. <laughs> and it very well could be at session zero, you say, how about we start this game not knowing each other and play out how we meet for the first time? Mm -hmm. That's perfectly valid. But you also have all the other stuff that you establish at session zero that allows you to form the type of game that you all want to play. Yeah, which actually brings up a really cool example because I recently played in a game where our characters didn't know each other at all and so we did our character backgrounds and we built our characters and everything and then we had basically a mini session after that that established how we knew each other and then going into actual session one we were people who'd been traveling together for you know a week mm -hmm. or a month or whatever that had this common goal but in that first like miniature session, we didn't know mm -hmm. each other. And so I, I think that if you don't want to do these kind of character background relationships, that's also a really good option to make sort of a miniature session mm -hmm. out of your session zero. Session and I think zero that there are definitely five. games that do that. I can't think of them off of the top of my head. You guys can all <laughs> tweet at us or I don't know, whatever the kids are We've doing only these days. we 10 games so far, Amelia. I know. Only nine by the time this That's one right. comes out. You guys don't know about the other one yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> we know things. <laughs> Insider yes. information. But that is not necessarily the common occurrence. But I do think that that's a cool option if you want to do it that way and you don't want to be somebody's brother or cousin mm -hmm. or mother's uncle twice removed. Exactly. You can be a group and, and you can establish that together and actually play it out rather than writing backstory for yeah, it. Yeah, and I think a mini uh, uh, session with uh, your entire group with the intent of this session is going to be how we got together from start, middle, and end, leading right mm -hmm. into session one is a great idea because let me tell you, the last time we played, uh, my friends and I played a Heroes Unlimited campaign, which was a mm -hmm. few years ago, not too long ago, though. It was just two players, one GM, did not know each other beforehand. And it took us, I want to say, four sessions before we even met. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Because our stories were so different. But they were, and I got to say, it was brilliant the way everything converged. But it was a while. You're basically playing two separate games yeah, then for a while. Two separate one-player rpgs until we met each other basically and like i said it's it's that's really tough when you are an adult and scheduling is hard yep. you want to make the most out of those sessions you don't want to be having yeah. those you want to get in and play yep. and so while using a session zero does take up some of that time and does require some of that scheduling mm -hmm. it definitely makes the games that you have moving forward a lot more worthwhile i think and especially if you are wanting to create all of these relationships beforehand, that not only makes your lives a little bit easier with how to know how to act with a lot of your other characters, but also your GM can get into the story they want to be telling a lot sooner than having to handhold basically everybody into finally meeting each other. Absolutely. And some of those choices, the kinds of relationships that the characters build and the kind of characters that your players build are indications to the GM. These are the things that are important to me. And as a GM, that gives you kind of ideas to weave into your game as, you know, you can sort of pinpoint the things that people are picking up mm -hmm. on and the things that they're excited about. And so doing that in person really offers that extra level of like, okay, I know what's yeah. up here. And so it is really valuable. And I think that it, there's a lot there that a GM can take mm -hmm. home and kind of work with too. And like I said, you as a player can signal, even in subtle ways, these are the things that are important to me. You know, if I built this as part of my character background, mm -hmm. my character's backstory and their relationships, I'm signaling to the GM that this is a thing that I want to come up yeah. in the game. This is a thing that's important to me. 
And so I think that there's a lot of value in doing this together just because of Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, if you listen back to pretty much any of the first two episodes of any of our series, by the time we're done with our characters and we're creating plausible backstories of how we all know each other, we've got Mm -hmm. already a bunch of plot points that a savvy GM would easily be able to pick up on and create a really cool story for pretty much any of those groups. I mean, that's the running joke was we always walk away and we're like, I want to play this campaign. And it was like, what campaign? You just made characters. Uh We had no plot points in mind when we sit down to make this story. We just walk away going, that's a game that I want to play. You know, like our Spire series too. We're like, okay, I want to know how you are involved in this like insider crime thing and I'm helping cover up this dead body Uh and like... I mean, that's a game that I want to play. Like, I want to know about those droids and their weird adopted (laughs) Jedi kid. Like, it's amazing. And so there's so much that happens when you... (laughs) I know, spoilers. I I told everybody already. I warned them. Listen to all the other episodes first. (laughs) It's very true. (laughs) But there's so much to be gained there that, like, you know... I mean, even as a GM, if you walked into session zero with literally no idea... Mm -hmm what kind of game you wanted to play, which I don't suggest because a valuable part of Session Zero is explaining what the game's going to be. You could come out with a campaign just based on the weird stuff your players come up with because we have no Mm -hmm. GMs in our episodes. We have no, you know, and we have no campaign in mind. We just make stuff Mm -hmm. up. And it's, I'm, it's real good. You guys, I'm going to pat myself on the back. We've made some really good, weird oh, stuff, yeah. and I love it. And spoiler alert, some of the games that we have created characters for, we prepped a little bit ahead of time, too. Like, some of we these did. games, the character creation's really, really long. And so we did a lot of the work beforehand, and we still were able to, through talking through a session zero with our guests, we came up with some pretty cool cohesive backstories that allowed everything to weave together perfectly. You can build your character. You know, there are lots of games that are really mechanically intense to build characters. And so, Ryan, I'm looking at you. Cough, 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 cough. (laughs) (laughs) What? Heroes Unlimited. What? What? Four hours? What? But there are lots of games that have really intense, mechanically in-depth character creation that aren't fun to sit around and watch people math at their character sheets. So having a session zero doesn't mean that you can't do some of that Mm -hmm. ahead of time. When we did our Deadlands episode, I think that you and I had a lot of our character stuff kind of figured out before we sat down. And I want to say that... Cameron and Alex and Caleb had some of their stuff figured out ahead of time, too. And same thing when we did our Blue Planet stuff. We had a lot of stuff figured out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And the important part there is to kind of remain flexible when Mm -hmm. you get to the table. I think that's a really – that's, again, another role-playing skill, learning to kind of be flexible and not be super attached to certain stories and things like that because they they can change Mm -hmm. and sometimes the dice don't do what you want. But yeah, having a session zero doesn't mean that you can't do any thinking about the game ahead Mm -hmm. of time. In fact, I strongly discourage that. I think that you should go in with an idea of what you want Mm -hmm. to do and what you want your character to be and all that kind of stuff and then kind of workshop it from there because I think you know pretty well in your heart what you're passionate about and what kind of things that you like. Mm -hmm. And so feel free to maximize that and feel free to build a character that fits what you want. Mm -hmm. Don't... Again, don't do anything that's less than amazing, Mm -hmm. but, you know, it's okay to have some of that figured out ahead of time. And I I think you should, because otherwise you're going to be there for 400 years. It's funny that you mentioned flexibility, because even with the Blue Planet stuff and the Deadland stuff, I had pretty much spec'd out my characters almost 100% mechanically before we did the recordings. Mm -hmm. But both of those characters, I changed multiple things on throughout the session zero because of what other people were saying. I caught on that somebody had this skill or somebody had this and I was thinking, oh, well, I don't need that then. So maybe I'll swap it to this. Right. And there's a lot of like 
oh, that idea, you know, because we start coming up with those ideas for like, well, what is this group doing? Like, why do I have this? And you're like, oh, well, then it makes sense for me to take this Mm -hmm. skill instead. Or I want to increase this trait. Or, you know, there were lots of times where we sat down too and somebody mentioned something about the mechanics that we Mm -hmm. didn't know. And we were like, oh, okay, I'm going to change these stats around because what you just told me about leveling up later on, you know, I can't buy this Mm -hmm. later on or whatever. And so there's a lot of value in having those discussions with people too, especially, you know, your GM or other players mm-hmm. in your group who might be super familiar with that system yes. too. Especially if you're starting a new system. Uh, if you are listening to a lot of our episodes and thinking, oh, well, we should try this game with our group or whatever. We're sorry, yeah. Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry we're making you buy all yes, the games. It's a, it's a thing that we kind of apologize for. But <laughs> very half heartedly. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. sorry. Not sorry. But if if you're playing a new game and say only a couple or a few of you at the table are familiar with the system at all, and maybe one of you is an expert, you're going to have questions when you come into character creation and especially uh, getting into actually play the game itself. Definitely. The last point that I want to bring up about why you should have a session zero is that it's a good time to talk about the game itself not necessarily like the campaign or scenario that you're going to play but like out of character the game Mm -hmm. the other players your relationship with the gm you know so you want to set up expectations for the game because i think we've all been in games where you're kind of like not sure what the other people want out of it or kind of what the etiquette is for certain things No, I will play a lot of games now, too, where people spend a lot of time talking out of character. And as somebody who does more AP podcasting, that feels kind of weird to me because we are talking in character most of the Mm -hmm. time. And so kind of setting expectations for, you know, how much of that is there going to be? I think it's a really good time to talk about what is the tone of this Mm -hmm. game? Because there are lots of times where you sit down and you're like, I'm going to play this really good dramatic game. And then everybody gets very silly Mm -hmm. and you're like not feeling it. Or the other way around, that you want to just sit down and have some fun and do something lighthearted and everybody's like, no, we're going to solve all the problems of the mm-hmm. universe today and have very serious moral quandaries. Yes, and extremely intense court drama. Right. <laughs> it, absolutely. I'm there for it. That sounds like a free game. <laughs> but I want a light and fun party. You know, like, yes. But like little things like, you know, do we want to have computers at the mm-hmm. table? Does that... You know, is that okay? Like, what are our our rules about phones? How often are you thinking that we should take breaks? Are there house rules that we're going to be playing with? All of that stuff is good to talk about up Mm -hmm. front so that you're not halfway through the game and somebody goes, well, you never said that before. Well, I did because we had a session zero. Yeah, and session zero is a great place to set a lot of these rules. And you have a phone. You have people with social media. You have computers with youtube and news sites and all sorts of other things that can easily distract players and gms alike and having all of that established of what are some okay and not okay uses of technology ahead of time will dramatically limit the amount of eye rolling there is at the table at all of the people that are like oh bob's on his phone again during combat he doesn't know it's his turn he hasn't figured out what he wants to do and he doesn't know how many enemies are left he's the wizard and and he hasn't picked out any spells that he wants to cast and his turn's next and he's not even aware that his turn is next yeah i mean and definitely that's like any of the advice that we give in this episode some of it's going to apply to your games and some of it's not so for me i do almost all of my role playing exclusively online Mm -hmm. We all record remotely. We play remotely. We use online dice rollers. You know, we do stuff in Roll20. Yes. So not having a computer at the table is not an option because the computer is exactly. my game. But, you know, kind of setting that those expectations even of like, how much other stuff are you mm-hmm. doing? Are you paying attention to mm-hmm. the game? And just knowing that everybody's kind of on the same page of like, we only have four hours or whatever. We need you to yeah. be there. Are we going to talk in character? Are we going to talk mm-hmm. out of character? Are we going to, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And just as long as you're really clear and upfront 
I don't care what rules yeah. you decide to do. I don't care if you decide to do house rules. I don't care if you think that computers at the table are totally yeah. fine and they work really great for your group. The point is that it's a discussion mm-hmm. that you're having. And if you're just there to hang out with your friends and have a good time and it doesn't matter how much game you get to play. Because fellowship is your type exactly. of fun. Then feel free <laughs> to be very lax in the amount of rules that you have. There's There's nothing that says you have to follow it this way in order to have fun playing this game because that's the beauty of role-playing games you can have fun Mm -hmm. however you want to have fun if you're having fun you're playing the game right you're doing it right exactly we're not on rpg (laughs) (laughs) so now that we've explained what on earth a session zero is and why we think you should have one i kind of want to dig into a tool that We've been working on um, someone in our Discord server casually asked, hey, does anybody have a guide for what kind of stuff to talk about at a session zero? And I said, I don't know, but someone should. Yes. So we've been putting together a Google Doc and we will link it in the show notes for this episode. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be something that I kind of continue to work on because I want to put links to some resources and stuff like that in there as we go. But for right now, Ryan and I are going to kind of run down this document that we've put together that kind of goes over some of the questions and conversations that you should be having or that we think you should be having at your session zero. And like I said, we'll put a link to it in the show notes so that you can kind of, it's a Google Doc, Mm -hmm. so you can make a copy of it for yourself if you want and use it for your games Mm -hmm. because I think that it's a useful tool just to kind of remind you of things to talk about. Exactly. And I just got to say, Amelia did a lot of the work on this, and if you really like the layout here, you will know a little bit of what our guests get to see when they come on our show and get a very beautiful outline every single time. It's not color-coded like our show outline. Oh, that's okay. I think that the biggest piece here that I want to say up front is that this guide is for GMs and for players. Mm -hmm. So there are spots where it's kind of broken down a little bit to ask questions of the GM or to prompt them to ask questions of the players. But there's also sections to prompt players to ask questions of their GM because I think that that's a thing that we don't do enough. And in a lot of the session zero advice I see, I mean, on top of my soapbox about role-playing advice being for (laughs) GMs, a lot of the session zero advice I see is, hey, GMs, these are things that you should ask your players or you should talk to your players about. But conversations go two ways. Mm -hmm. And so... This document does have sections for GMs, but it does have a lot of stuff for players, too, because I think, like I said before, this is a really good time to set those expectations and as a player to say, here's what I want. Here's what would be fun for me. I'm going to start right at the top and say that I think the best place a session zero should start is with the basic premise of the game. Yeah, I think that knowing what kind of game you're going to play, it's a really valuable part of your character building Mm -hmm. and part of why i don't think you should build characters alone because you know like i said before you can end up with this character that has nothing to do with Mm -hmm. the kind of campaign or scenario that you're going to play yeah so i really encourage gms in particular to kind of say here's the elevator pitch for what my game is just like a quick couple sentence maybe one sentence even rundown of like Here's the, here's the splash thing that goes on the movie poster. Mm-hmm. Like, here's kind of what we're going to be doing. Exactly. You don't want to be creating characters for a land game when your GM has a underwater campaign planned. That's just Absolutely. not going to work. You want everybody to have fun, and you're going to have the most fun when your character matters in this game. Exactly. So. So, yeah. Having that right at the top gets a lot of that basic stuff right out of the way and lets you start diving into some really good stuff. The next thing that you probably want to cover is what does the GM want from the game and what do the players want from the game? You can go over what sort of themes that everybody wants to cover, what ideas uh, that you want to explore, uh, what types of adventure you want to go on. Do you want to have like a redemption story? Do you want to focus around family? Things like that. What sort of tone do you want the game to be? Do you want to play a really serious game? Do you want to play a really silly game? Or, or maybe you want to dig into something, like, really dark. That's fine. This is a great place to set what you want from the game. And then also, the do you want stories or scenes? Are there specific moments that you want to have 
things that you want to highlight like locations or or something like that so there's a lot of different little things that you can talk about at this portion to get what the gm kind of wants out of the game and what the players want out of the game yeah and i think that this is a thing that sort of the the old school rule book kind of frowns upon sometimes is saying like here's a specific scene that i want to have or you know a specific story beat that i want to hit mm-hmm. But I think that there's a lot of value in that as a player. In one of our campaigns, we had a player who said, I have this boyfriend who has gone missing and I want to make sure that he comes back at some point and it is a complicated thing my character has to deal mm-hmm. with. And to some people that feels a little bit metagamey mm-hmm. to say, you know, and because you know this thing is coming now and I think certainly that's a discussion that you can have in a session zero mm-hmm. about whether you're okay with that or not. But I do think that there's a lot of value in, like I said, just saying what you want because I can't help you yeah. if you don't tell me. And so I know that it's that's a thing that's a little bit weird for some people because it's kind of not how – it's not how I was quote unquote no. brought up in role playing to have those kinds of discussions. It was like the GM is doing mm-hmm. their thing over there and you as a player get to experience mm-hmm. it. Well, it's, a, it's effectively a spoiler f- right, for the campaign right. because you're, you're saying, hey, fit this somewhere into your story and I don't care how it does it. If you, if you leave it general enough, a good GM should be able to put that into the story where it makes sense. Absolutely. And I think that you know, when you say something like that, here's a specific story beat that I want to hit. Mm-hmm. You know, like I really love bank heists or I really love, you know, like that doesn't tell you anything about how that's going to happen, mm-hmm. how the GM is going to pull that off, like where yeah. that's going to go down. Yeah. But if you say you're playing these criminals or whatever, and you're like, you know what? I really want to rob a casino. Yeah. That's a that's a cool story beat that, you know, like I love those kinds of movies. Great. You as a GM can be like, perfect. You have just given me something to to do a scenario to write and i didn't have to think of it Mm -hmm. that's awesome and i know that my players will like it because they voiced that to me right exactly and so i know that when you look at this guide that we've written up there is some of that in there and if you decide that that's not a thing that you want to use because you're not super comfortable with some of that metagaming Mm -hmm. type stuff that's totally okay but i do want to encourage you to kind of think about it because i do feel like there's a lot of value Mm -hmm. in that another topic that I think is really important for session zero is expectations. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start by talking about GM expectations of players because players a lot of times feel like I show up and a game happens to me. And I know that that's something that people heard me say if they were at the one shot panel at Gen Con, (laughs) that like games don't happen to you. You need to show up and you need to play. You need to be part of the game. Absolutely. And so I think In some of these conversations, while the GM is kind of working out, like, what do my players want? This is also a time where the GM can tell you what they expect of you Mm -hmm. and, you know, what kind of things need to go into a game for it to make it worth their time. Mm -hmm. GMs put in a lot of planning and a lot of prep. And I certainly, in our player advice series, don't want to diminish the role of a GM because they are, like, I, I love the beautiful stories that they put together and my life would not be nearly as fun if I didn't have GMs, Mm -hmm. but they are allowed to say that they expect things of you as a player Mm -hmm. as well. And so I think some of the things that a GM should kind of set up are how much in character versus out of character talk they want. Again, whether we're going to have laptops or phones at the table, what kind of supplies do you expect your players to bring? Mm-hmm. I know that feels really basic, but like, should they show up with their own dice? Do you expect everyone to have their own copy of the rule book or are we going to share at the table? Do you want people to have minis because you're going to be doing some tactical combat stuff? All of that is good stuff to kind of lay out. So nothing's really left unspoken. Right. How much story input do you want your players to have? You know, a lot of GMs have crafted really specific worlds or, you know, they have kind of this idea of scenes. Do you want your players to be able to walk into a room and kind of describe it for you? Or is that something that you're not super comfortable with because you have an idea of what you want in your head? Mm-hmm. It's best to avoid disappointment by just setting that up outright. Do you expect that your players are going to narrate their own actions? Do you want them to describe how they deliver that killing blow? Mm-hmm. Or are you okay if they just say, I rolled a 20, it's dead? You know, like what kind of feel do you want out of that? Mm -hmm. Another thing for during sessions is how to talk about problems when they arise during a session. Yeah. 
you know, how do you expect players to communicate that to you? Do you want them to pull you aside and do it one-on-one? Are you okay with them saying it in front of everybody? Does that not bother you? Do you want them to wait until the game is over to kind of bring up a concern about the game? Setting those expectations, I think, will help people not have hurt feelings Mm -hmm. because people deal with confrontation differently. They deal with praise differently. I know as a person, like if somebody called me out in front of a lot of people, I would not really like that. I know other people don't care. They say, you know what, like tell me if there's a problem. I would rather be pulled aside one-on-one, but I would want to know while it's happening, not afterwards. Mm -hmm. But that may not be everybody's preference. So I think it's good to kind of set that up and let players know if you do have something to say, here's how you should say Mm -hmm. it. Do you want to talk a little bit about the between sessions section there? Yeah. And then between sessions, uh, you have to figure out what kinds of homework that you want your players to have. Do you want them to be thinking about what their characters are going to be doing next session? Do you want to have them figure out um, if there's any other portions of their background that they want to be kind of pulling into the story for next time. All sorts of little things that players can do between sessions that will enhance the game for next time. Yeah, I know there have been several games where I've had that there was like a month or a week or whatever of downtime, like while you were traveling Mm -hmm. and the GM will say, next time you come back, let me know what you were doing. And so you may want your players to kind of think about those little vignettes Mm -hmm. and come back to you with something to sort of narrate that too. Yeah. And then between sessions, whether or not you want your players to be doing their their leveling up for the characters, say you advance to a new level, you can do that. Or if you have an XP buy system, have them spend their XP between sessions. Maybe you don't want to be taking time at the table to do all of that. So you just say, We're going to hold off on all advancement until the session ends, and then you can start doing your stuff between sessions. If you have questions, just hit me up on Facebook or whatever. Between sessions is a great time to do that for games that are designed to allow that. Always little exceptions here and there. Yeah, but that's always a good, again, a good conversation to have Mm -hmm. to say, you know, I do want this between sessions or I don't. I know that there are some GMs, too, who say... No, I want to talk to you about what skills you're picking up so that I can, yeah. you know, use that or like build that into the story or something mm-hmm. like that. Too, so they may they may want you to do it at the table. Yeah. And then another thing to talk about is should people be in touch between sessions? Uh, do you want your players to be discussing the story between when the story is actually happening or do you want to keep that all at the table? Um I think that's a perfectly valid thing that that a GM could ask of their players. I know that I've had games here and there where we kind of do some between session Mm -hmm. sort of like playing out some downtime stuff. You know, you have these, okay, time passes, you know, Mm -hmm. what what is happening? Like, what is your montage of that kind of stuff? And so some of that is cool to play out between sessions. So you may not want your players to speculate. You may say, like, I want what happens at the table Mm -hmm. to be the game. If it doesn't happen at the table, it didn't happen. And that's certainly valid. I also think, though, that there are other games where you say, I want to narrate some of this weird stuff Mm -hmm. that's happening in between Mm -hmm. that we're not seeing. Yeah. And so, you know, what level of comfort do you have Mm -hmm. with those kinds of things? Yeah. And how should people do that? Yeah. And if you want your players to even go a little bit more meta and start building a town that's separate from those characters and say the town that you build will be canon, and maybe you'll visit it at some point. Let them... Oh, that would be so fun. Exactly. Let them have fun with part of your world. That'd be a really interesting way to keep people engaged. Cool world building stuff. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. So uh, there's a lot of ways that you can keep players engaged. I know as adults, we have a lot of time between sessions if we're not able to find babysitters if we have variable schedules if we're doing two plus podcasts things like that if it's the holidays the holidays you know? like i i feel like when i look at game planning too i'm like just count out half of november all of december and half of uh-huh. january that, like we're just not gonna play that's pretty much my friends and i that's what we do it's If we can get together in the beginning of November, perfect. Otherwise, it's going to be the next year until we get together Mm -hmm. again. So let's let's get it done. 
And momentum is such a huge part of games and especially long running yeah. campaigns, like keeping things moving and honestly f- not feeling totally like not having to completely like re-engage with mm, the game, not yeah, feeling yeah. totally off track when you sit down to play again. Having some kind of discussions between sessions can kind of keep some of that momentum going. Yeah. Um, we are in touch pretty much daily. Mm-hmm either talking about like ideas for the campaign or like here's a cool thought that i had Mm -hmm. or you know like we're not role playing stuff out but it'll be like a quick message to say like hey here's a thought that i had so like it's written down somewhere and kind of keep some of that momentum going yes but then also just talking about life because these people are my friends Mm -hmm. but it's it keeps some of that engagement and so you don't feel totally like fresh when you go to start again Mm -hmm. it's not like starting a whole new campaign because you haven't had time to play because everybody was traveling for the holidays yes and being creative is basically like using a muscle and if you don't use your Mm -hmm. muscles they're gonna get weak so if you've got a good creative outlet, especially if you have a creative outlet that is surrounding the game that you're playing, goodness, you're going to have a better time. Let's see other things that you can have between sessions is what kind of feedback do you want from the players and how do you want it? So do you want your players to be talking about what's been happening, what they've liked, what they've disliked? How do you want them to contact you about that? Do you want to do that when you're hanging out with them to watch x sports game together you know set some sort of expectations and boundaries there yeah i think there's a value sometimes in doing it after a session and sitting down to say like okay how did we all feel Mm -hmm. about this you know like doing a little debrief and saying okay like what did you like what did you not like but i've had sessions where like i walked away and i was like it was okay and then like a day later i'm like you know what no i really liked that Mm -hmm. Or, you know, a couple of days later being like, you know, this one thing kind of bugged yeah. me. And so I think that there's value in in possibly doing it both mm-hmm. ways. But I also think, like I said before, that there are some times that like you you don't want to be called out publicly. Yeah. And that's totally fine. You know, like if a player has a concern, you know, here's how you can contact mm-hmm. me. Let's let's have this conversation one on one. What is the best way for them to do that? How do you want that feedback yeah. from them between sessions too? Not just like mm-hmm. in game, hey, I don't like the way that you said that or whatever. Exactly. You know, but between like, hey, here's a thing that I feel like is going really well and if we could keep mm-hmm. doing that. And w- another great thing about delaying it a little bit be- between sessions instead of right after the game sometimes is say you have a really on point session and things are clicking things are moving along at a really great pace you get done with it if you've ever gone to a really like exciting movie and gotten out of the movie and you're like oh that was the greatest thing i have ever seen oh my gosh and then two days later you're like but the plot holes oh my goodness, that movie was bad. You don't really have a good sense sometimes when you've got your adrenaline going and you're on the high from a really, like, overall great game to see all the Well, and it might be just that, like, you had a great time with your friends. Like, the friendship part of it was awesome, but you walk away and you're like, I don't remember anything that we did in that session. Like, the game itself wasn't great. Exactly. You know? Or maybe you walk away and you're like, this was a really great game, but I, th- I'm i having issues with that other player yeah. or whatever. Like there are, there are times where like a little bit of perspective mm-hmm. can add a lot. And so, yeah, I think there's a lot of value in doing it, not just right after a session, mm-hmm. but also a little bit later on. Because I think right after a session, stuff is still fresh yes. in your mind too. So sometimes that is a good time to give feedback. Mm-hmm. But I, I personally would suggest that there's a lot of value in both, but it's a discussion to mm-hmm. have. Like, how do you want it? When do you want it? You know. Exactly. Again, these are GM expectations of players. And the last little bit that we have for between sessions is what kind of feedback do you plan to give players yourself? I think player feedback is super underrated. Mm -hmm. And as a player, I want my GM to say, hey, here's a thing that I think you did really well Mm -hmm. today. Like you were on point with this role playing thing or you had this really great scene. 
I also similarly want my GM to pull me aside and say like, hey, here's some character knowledge that like you maybe should have maybe before next time if you want to read up Mm -hmm. a little bit on this, because I think that like you'll have more fun if you know more about this thing. Yeah, especially if it's like a mythology thing. Right. Or to just pull you aside and say like, hey, you seemed a little hesitant about this thing. Like, what can I do to help you feel a little more comfortable or to say like, hey, you, I, I really appreciate the way you handled this thing. Yeah. Whatever. I, I think that GMs should give their players feedback as much as players should give it to mm-hmm. GMs. 100%. Because, again, the GM is another person at that table. It's another part of that relationship. And so, you know, they they want to play with good players as much as players want to play with a good GM. Yeah. And so I, I think that players should be open to feedback. And I think that GMs should be open to giving mm-hmm. it. Exactly. And, uh, again... This is a negotiation. This isn't a, this is what's happening. This is a, you're having a discussion between the GM and the players, and this is the expectations that are being set for your game. This is session Mm -hmm. zero. As a player, you may look at your GM and say, you know what? I don't want feedback on my character voice. Mm -hmm. For me, sometimes it's like, you know what? I know it's bad. I don't need you to yeah, tell exactly. me. Like, I don't need you to tell me that I didn't do a good job mm-hmm. on that. There there may be things that as a player, you're like, you know what? I don't I don't really care and I don't want to hear exactly. it. Exactly. Say it, say it more nicely than that. <laughs> but again, yeah, it's a discussion. And so you should feel free to say like, no, I, I don't really want feedback on that. Or like, that's not a thing that I'm super comfortable talking about. Or I'm embarrassed by yeah. my inability to do good character voices or whatever. Exactly. It certainly doesn't mean that the GM should feel obligated to give you a rubric and critique your ability as a player Mm -hmm. because this is fun it should be fun like we're all just hanging out having a good time but we want it to be the best thing possible Mm -hmm. and so there is some room to say hey i think that it could go a little better or hey here's what went really well because we should always remember that feedback is not always negative oh yeah right that there's such thing as positive feedback too and so certainly it's really good to give that kind of stuff mm-hmm. too. Yeah, positive reinforcement for me is one of the best learning tools because it tells me I'm doing something right and that feels so good. I strongly mm-hmm. agree. I think we all respond better to positive feedback. Yes. So remember when we talk about feedback, it is not just negative feedback, but positive exactly. feedback as well. This section kind of mirrors what we talked about with GM expectations of players, mm-hmm. But now we go into player expectations of G- of the GM. There are some things that are specific to a discussion with your GM. Should the GM make roles out in the open? Or are you okay if they do it behind a screen? How do you want the GM to answer rules questions or disputes? You know, do you want them to take the time to look it up in the book? Or do you want to say, you know what, I trust your judgment. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Are there any house rules that you, you want to go over or that you would love to for your GM to implement. Mm-hmm. Hey, I played in this other game and we did this thing. It worked really yes. well. It would be cool if we could do that mm-hmm. here. This is the time to have that discussion. Again, like we said before, how much power do players have to define scenes or to narrate or describe things? Mm-hmm. You want to ask your GM how are they're going to handle problems that arise during a session? You know, if there's a problem with another player, mm-hmm. are they going to pull them aside one on one? Is it are they going to pause the game and talk it through? Do you want to wait until the game is over? Yeah. All of those kinds of things, like we said in the GM section, are things that you guys should kind of negotiate and have mm-hmm. a discussion about. Yeah. And one of the things that this uh, kind of brings me to is it's a negotiation. It's it's a discussion with your GM from your perspective. So don't expect this to be a, you need to do it this way because that's how we want it and have them accept that as law. This is a... I'm suggesting that this is the way it should be. And if it's not, that's okay. Right. I think, you know, as much as we talk about the GM isn't God, Mm -hmm. they don't make all the rules. It's important to remember that just because the players outnumber the GM does not mean that their their word is law either. Like, again, this is a relationship. It's it needs to be give and take. Mm -hmm. There needs to be open communication about things and you need to set expectations. That's entirely what this is about is, yes, compromise (laughs) is the key word in any in any good relationship. But, you know, just say what's important to you, say what isn't and be really open about that, because, again, it's going to go better if you say what you want. You know, it's like it's like anything else in life. Yeah. Now we're leading kind of in between the sessions for the player expectations of the GM. 
basically the, a lot of this will be mirroring what the GM's expectations were. We want to know how much communication should we be having with the GM or each other between the games. What kind of feedback do we want from the GM about the session? What kind of feedback do we want to give our GM? Can or should players engage with the story between sessions? And how much should the GM tell players about what is coming up? Yeah, so a lot of that kind of mirrors what we said for the GM to kind of talk about between sessions. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, it goes both ways. Yep, and it, it's very valid. If, if you want to take this and hand a copy to every player and say, you know, write down your answers to these questions and then we'll go over them. If you want to have them do that ahead of time, that's perfectly uh, that's a perfectly valid way of using this document for your session zeros. So that way, mm -hmm. as players, you can focus on the player points, and then you might find some similarities with the other players as you're going through things. So now we're going to start to get into uh, like a little bit of the meatier stuff, we'll mm -hmm. say. But I also want to say that we're actually not going to get too deep into no. it. So we're going to talk about safety in your sessions and kind of how to navigate that in the session mm -hmm. zero. But we're going to dig much deeper into that in another episode because it is a thing that's that's really important and it's important to navigate well. Yes. And I, I want to make sure that we give it its due time and really highlight as many resources and stuff as we can. And I just don't think that we have time to do that in one episode. No about all of session zero Correct. so we'll kind of give a quick rundown here and some of this stuff is in the documents and like i said eventually i want to be able to put more like sources and resources and mm -hmm. stuff in for people but for now we'll just kind of cover the bare bones basics of exactly. this and i promise that next week we'll we'll really dig in deep mm -hmm. for safety the best place to start is to say here are the specific things i want to avoid mm -hmm. Ideally, going into a session zero, you should at least know what game you're playing. Yeah. And so you can kind of get an idea of the system and, mm -hmm. you know, that because there are some systems that straight off the bat, you're like, okay, here's a thing that's going to come yes. up. You yes. know, if I sit down to play Knights Black Agents, I know there's going to be vampires. Yep. That's what the game mm -hmm. is. But now at this point, your GM has kind of given their elevator pitch of like what our scenario is. And you as a person know what you are and are not comfortable with in general. This is a good time to say, here's my list of absolute no's. Yes. And here's my list of things that, like, I'm maybe not super cool with if they were done right, mm -hmm. you know? Like, here's my list of things that I would like you to be careful with. Because I think that those are important distinctions. Mm -hmm. You know, there are there are themes in a lot of games that are mature, but if done well and done carefully, can help tell really good stories. Exactly. So you don't necessarily want to say, I want to outright avoid this absolutely under no circumstances. Mm -hmm. But you want to say like, hey, this is a thing that could maybe be a little bit touchy for me. I want you to handle it with care. Or also to say to your GM, hey, if it's going to come up, would you mind talking to me about it ahead of time so that I can sort of emotionally prepare mm -hmm. myself? Or can we talk about how it's going to come up so that I can let you know if that's a thing I'm going to be okay exactly. with? This is the time to have that discussion and to talk to your GM about like what you want that to look mm -hmm. like. Because I also think that's kind of an ongoing conversation yep. that should happen. But you can signal to your GM like, hey, here's a thing that might be a little bit touchy mm -hmm. for me. And I would like to know ahead of time or I'd like to talk it out with you how it's going to come up. And this is also a great time to have not that conversation not only with your GM, but also with the other players at the table if you're comfortable with that. Because, mm -hmm. you, like we said before, you don't want a player to accidentally bring up something that is an absolute no for you. Mm -hmm. And that could very easily happen since you can do anything in role-playing games. Absolutely. And another thing I want to say is that sometimes making this list can be rough for people. Mm -hmm. I know that I have a few things that I that are hard no's for me. And it's a little bit tough to say because to some degree I feel, and like this is my own like personal sense of obligation. Nobody's really making me feel this way. But sometimes I feel like I have to explain why I'm not okay with that or like what part of it bothers yeah. me or something like that. You know, you can kind of, you feel uncomfortable. Like there are things that I want to say, like this is a hard no for mm -hmm. me and I don't want to share my life story Correct. with you. I'm lucky enough to play in a group of people where I feel really comfortable mm -hmm. saying this is a no for me and here's yes. why so that they know to avoid all of the things around that mm -hmm. as well. 
but sometimes you don't. And so there are definitely mechanisms to get that across without having to like say it out loud to people. That's the beauty of like online communication Mm -hmm. or a shared Google Doc. So I know for our games, because we're all remote, we will put one together like months ahead of starting a campaign. We've had one for months for our upcoming game. The book just came out yesterday. Mm -hmm. New L5R Mm -hmm. book. I mentioned L5R, so I get also money for that. (laughs) But we've been kind of talking back and forth. And one of the sections that we always include is like, here are my hard no's. And so I can go into that doc and I can type it in there and it doesn't like have my name attached Mm -hmm. to it. You know, my GM doesn't care who said no to it. They just know that it's a no. And that's that. The other option is if you feel comfortable with your GM, you can ask them to make that list. You can all kind of message the GM and say... You know, so that like the other players don't necessarily know who isn't comfortable with mm-hmm. that, but they know that it's still enough. Exactly. So there are certainly mechanisms to do that if you don't feel comfortable sharing with the class, mm-hmm. but still want to get across that this isn't okay. Exactly. On the other hand, like I really encourage you to say how you feel and like say what your no's are and you don't have to explain. And if somebody says why, just mm-hmm. say because that's fine. They don't need your whole life yeah. story. They don't need you to relive your trauma for them. That's that's not exactly. their problem. The answer is no. Exactly. And I have very few rules about role playing, but like that that falls into one of them that if I say like no means no is in life in role playing in general, no means no. So if I say this is a no, it's a and no. And we'll be talking about that uh, a lot more in the the next episode about all the safety stuff when we do a deep dive into it. But that's that's pretty much uh the gist of the X card. You hit it, no questions asked, it's a no. Do something different. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about it. And we're coming at this discussion from the perspective of we're playing with friends or we're playing with people that we want to be friends with at the very least. And mm-hmm. we're playing with people that we probably know, uh, especially yeah. especially for a campaign, because uh, campaigns mm-hmm. are especially important for having session zeros like this. Now, we really hope, and I know this is not good that, not the case for a lot of places, but we would really hope that a lot of local game store games and campaigns would implement safety tools like this so that players... I've been seeing them more and more, honestly, at conventions, yes. too. I know that a lot of convention games that I have played at have, you know, the GM has put mm-hmm. an X card on the table, or there have been a couple of times, too, where another player has, like, taken out an index card, put an X on it, and put it in oh, the, middle of the table and said, are you aware of what 100%. this is? Please remember, as a player, if you're in a convention game or something and you yes. want to implement the X card, do it. Do it. Like, just have the courage of your convictions. Yeah. Throw that thing in the middle of the table. Ask the GM if they have a post-it mm-hmm. note or rip off a piece of paper, whatever, and just say, you know, explain real quick to the table. Like, here's what an X card yeah. is. Here's mm-hmm. how it works. Here's, I want to establish this mm-hmm. rule. And you are fully within your right to say, this is a thing that makes me feel safe at the exactly. table. And if somebody has a problem with that, I don't. That's not a table uh-huh. that you need to play especially at. Especially if you're playing with strangers, especially at a con or especially at a brand new game store game. If you don't know mm-hmm. the people you're playing with, this is a perfectly acceptable tool. You can use it. Totally. And if they refuse, they probably aren't worth playing with. Right. Period. Absolutely. You know, when you play with people that you know, I can sit down with my friends and you know, like I said, because we communicate pretty frequently, they know what's going on in my life. And they can be like, you know what, Amelia's had a week, like, let's just avoid that Mm -hmm. particular Mm -hmm. thing. Because we know that that's been exactly. And when you're playing at a convention game or a game store or something like that, you don't necessarily have that benefit of knowing those people or what's going on Mm -hmm. in their lives. And they don't know you and what's going on in your life. So absolutely, you should feel free to implement your own safety tools if they are not provided. And GMs, if you are running a game at a game store or a convention, it is so important to make people feel safe at your 100%. table. hundred percent. And I'm sure that's something that we'll dig into oh, next yes. time because I think that, like, we have a whole plethora of tools that can help you do that and not totally stall your game because I know that that's a concern with people, too. They're like, well, I mean, if somebody taps the X card, then it just ruins the whole game. And it's like, no, they're not Xing your game. No. They're Xing that stupid thing you just exactly. said. Like... Be respectful, uh, you know. Stupid or suboptimal. Suboptimal, yes. yes. So, uh, yeah, and less than amazing. <laughs> and 
exactly. Alex says. We'll go over a lot of that in the next episode about safety. So basically know that there are a lot of mechanisms that one can use to implement these safety tools. And this is basically where you would choose which one you want to use and discuss how it's going to be used during the game. Another thing that you should definitely talk about is how to handle things that come up that aren't necessarily a hard no, but could be awkward or uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. This is a thing that I think comes up in horror games, yep. and which is kind of where we're going to be directing our, our next episode because it's Halloween. Mm -hmm. But in, you know, in games where you have romantic yes, relationships too, you know, it's definitely a little bit weird to like, look across the table uh -huh. at somebody and you know like my gm is playing my date yeah. and now we're going to narrate this sex scene like exactly. no we're not doing that and so these are the kinds of tools where you're like okay i'm okay admitting that this thing happened mm -hmm. i do not want to narrate and i do not want to role play exactly it. this is the kind of place to say like these are things that i'm kind of like mm -hmm. eh, on and here's how i would like them to be handled. exactly because it's difficult to flirt with your friends Mm -hmm. And doing that in character can be fun, but it can be... It's not fun for everybody. so uncomfortable. So mm -hmm. having a veil for something as simple as flirting, just saying, this is something that happened, and this is kind of how it went, is so much easier sometimes than actually flirting. Because, boy, right. howdy, that's... Oh. <laughs> and this is a good time to discuss that because there are because people are different yep. too. So like I can hear how you're talking about that and saying like, ooh, it's super uncomfortable. Whereas me, I'm like, that's a thing that I really yeah. want to do in a game. I really want to play out like a character romance with somebody mm -hmm. and like have this and I would be totally comfortable like with and you know, depending on who I'm mm -hmm. playing with, obviously. But like that's a thing that I really want to try out. But clearly you're not the person to try that out with. And so well, being see that I'm coming from the perspective of my friends and I. And, oh, totally. No, I mean, I'm not saying specifically, right. but I'm saying like at a, table, at a table, it's a yeah. good discussion to have because like if you and I didn't know each other or mm -hmm. like say I was one of those friends yeah. and I was totally comfortable with it and then I go to approach you and you're not a com mm -hmm. you're not very comfortable with it, that's not going to exactly. be fun. And so you can say like, hey, if it does come to this, that's the thing that I don't want to do. And I can say to, you know, my GM or another player like, hey, I'm totally cool mm -hmm. with that. That's fine. I'd love to see yes. how that goes. So those kinds of discussions, too, are, are not just game specific, but can be like a little more granular and be player specific. Exactly. Too. exactly. And you can say, yeah, like we said, you know, that I just want to like narrate this. You can also just say, I want to say this thing happened. Yes. Because sometimes you don't want to describe in detail everything that happened. Mm -hmm. You know, we we talked a little bit in our AP episode about the different kinds of character voice that there are in character, there's sort of paraphrasing and explaining, and then there's out of character. Yes. And so you may want to out of character say, here's the thing that happened. You may sort of paraphrasing want to describe a scene, mm -hmm. but not actually engage in that full conversation of what that looked like. You may want to actually play it out. Mm -hmm. And those are all options that you have, but kind of discussing like what things fall into what categories. Yeah, exactly. Checking in with everybody, especially when touchier subjects are coming in to play, is mm -hmm. extremely important. If your GM is planning to introduce one of your quote-unquote veils, that we'll talk about the terminology later, if they're planning to introduce something that you are okay-ish with, then check in with them to make sure it's not turned from an okay-ish into a hard no. There's importance in enthusiastic and ongoing consent, mm -hmm. right? Because I keep going back to the fact that this is a relationship. Yes. And so you want to be constantly checking in and making sure that things are not only okay, but still okay. People can change from day to day. And sometimes you might have a harder week than other weeks. And you get to the session, you just want to unwind, you don't want to deal with any of your maybe it's okays. That's perfectly fine. And it might even be fine during this the setup for the game to say, you know, I've had a really rough week. Maybe we can avoid 
any of my less happy things on my list of things that are good to avoid. Right. And I think sometimes, too, just, like, the way things are brought up, like, how they come about. You could say that, you know, like, I'm okay with death in my games. Yep. But I'm not okay with my character's mom dying because, you know, whatever. Yeah. You don't have to explain. But, you know, there may be, like, certain subsets of things that you're not okay mm-hmm. with. Or, like, the way that it came about in the story is particularly rough for you. Yeah. It, for whatever reason, checking in with people as it comes up is good. Check in not just in your session zero, not just when you first bring up the topic, but as it goes along, hey, are we still okay? Exactly. You know, is this still good? Are we still feeling comfortable? Are we still feeling, like, enthusiastic about this? Because, Mm -hmm. like we keep saying, anything that's less than great is not worth doing. You are here to have fun. You are playing role-playing games to have a good time. Yes. And so if you are not having a good time... Just say so. Mm -hmm. But also make sure that the people around you are having a good time. That is part of your responsibility in this role-playing relationship. Mm -hmm. If everybody is checking in on everybody else and making sure everybody else is having a good time, you're going to have a good time because you're part of the everybody else. Right. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to derail a whole game. You don't Mm -hmm. have to stop and be like, okay, I'm going to introduce topic X now. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. You can just kind of say... Like, look at the person and be like, is this okay? You know, even just, like, look at them and give them, like, a nod, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. there's there's lots of ways to communicate those things with people. But as long as you are, like I said, phrasing it as a question, too, yeah. I think I said at one point, give people the option to opt out. Yes. And, you know, that is advice for GMs, for players. Like, look at everybody around you and make sure that you're all having fun. Because even exactly. if you and I are playing out a romantic relationship and something's happening and we're both totally okay with it, mm-hmm. but our friend Jim Bob over here is not, yep. then we should stop. Mm-hmm. Because he is also here to play this game. Yes. Whether his character is being affected or not, he as a player is being affected. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so we need to have those be awareness of everybody too. That it's not just one-on-one, but this is yes. my relationship with everyone at the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just heard this recently, I believe on a a podcast, where they were talking about they play with their husband, and Mm -hmm. there was a point where they would flirt with their, their their character would flirt with their husband's character, but the Mm -hmm. husband got uncomfortable about that in front of all of their friends, because Mm -hmm. it was kind of like PDA. Right. Could... Yeah, and that's totally can be weird for people. Like, it, and people can feel weird about things for a variety of reasons. Yeah. And again, it doesn't matter why you're uncomfortable. You don't owe anybody an explanation. Exactly. This is a game you're here for fun. Have and fun. Just yeah. I, I mean, and and those are the kinds of things too that you wouldn't necessarily put on your list of hard no's, yes. right? You wouldn't say like, no, definitely no flirting. Yeah. But in the moment, you're like, you know what? I don't really like this. Mm-hmm. I, I thought I would be okay with it. Or it's a thing I've never tried before. Yeah. And I thought I would like it and I don't. Mm-hmm. So stop. Like you don't go buy some ice cream, not like it, and then keep eating it. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you stop. This is just like that. If you don't like it, then stop. Yes, exactly. And, and if someone else doesn't like it, stop. Yes, uh- that's even more important. <laughs> yes, yes. So, and again, we'll we will we're going to do a deep dive into these at some point. I know yeah. we've talked a lot about it because it's it's an important subject, and I definitely want to make mm-hmm. sure that people know some of it. But if you want to like learn more about some of the specifics of this or some some mechanics that can kind of help you work this out at the table or ahead of time, definitely listen to us next week because we're going to have a lot of a lot of talk about that. All right, so once you have gotten all of that wonderful Session Zero stuff out of the way, there's still a little bit of work that you need to do. Mm -hmm. This is the (laughs) out-of-game. Some of the out-of-game stuff, right? So Yeah, so how often are you going to be playing? Are you going to be playing in a weekly game like we might have done in college or high school? Or is it going to be monthly, which is going to be maybe a little bit more easy to handle when you have families and newborns and jobs and all this other real life stuff that might get in the way. Mm -hmm. How long are your sessions going to take? Are you going to be there for four hours? Are you going to play all day? Mm -hmm. You know, those are important things to know too, because again, I have to schedule my babysitter. Exactly. 
Yeah, and is it going to be a whole campaign that you're going to be playing? Are you going to be playing series one shots? Are you going to have a campaign that spans years or months? There's a lot of different ways that you can go about that, and this is a great way to figure out how long your campaign is actually going to be. And you may not know. I mean, the answer may be like until we feel like our story's done. Exactly. And that's totally fine too. But, you know, there are some games where you say like, okay, we're going to play this for three or four sessions and then that's good. We're going to try and wrap it up because exactly. I have a tight story that mm-hmm. I want to tell or, you know, we want to try this next new thing. Yep. But that's a good thing for everybody to know. Mm-hmm. And then how do we get in contact with each other? Are we going to be using Slack, Discord, email, instant messaging? SMS. <laughs> <laughs> Carrier pigeon. <Exactly>. Telegram. <laughs> Gorilla gram. <laughs> what happens if somebody needs to cancel plans? You know, sometimes mm-hmm. stuff comes up, you don't feel good, whatever. Yeah. How do you get in contact with everybody? Exactly. And do games go on without a player? You might mm-hmm. only have three or four people in your group. One player means you can't play. You might have six or seven people in your group, and one player means. Let's keep playing. We'll catch them up next time. Well, and what do you do in those instances where you say we can't play our campaign? Does everybody else still get together for board games? Do they? Do you play something else or do you mm-hmm. just agree like, eh, we'll try it again next time? And you may not always know the answer, but these are kind of just to roughly gauge how people are feeling too. Exactly. And then how do you want to manage the schedule? Are you going to be doing a Google calendar or are you going to be doing it on a spreadsheet or... Or however you want to keep track of it, how is that going to be kept track of? Yep. Do you just have people put it in their phones right there while you're at the game? Just mm-hmm. Do you bring it in your paper calendar or whatever? But like once those once those times are decided, how do you make sure that everybody remembers exactly. in two weeks that this was, was it last week or next week? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then you want to go over a few things like the game specifics, like house rules, important notes about the setting of the story, all sorts of things like that. You're going to be creating characters probably during your session zero, you know, figuring out the names and backgrounds and all that sort of fun, juicy detail. Yeah. And we didn't put a whole lot in our session zero document about creating characters and how to do those NPC relationships. I may flesh some of that out later, but a lot of systems kind of have some tools built or yeah. you'll kind of decide that around the table. I, You know, I might put in some kind of questions and stuff, but if you want to talk about how character building works in a group yeah we're not going to do it in this episode you can listen to pretty much any other episode of our show to see how that goes (laughs) and how we how we run down that process so i don't Mm -hmm. feel like we need to go into that into detail here we have you know nine times three episodes Mm -hmm. already 27 other episodes about building characters you can go find that somewhere else (laughs) exactly so effectively that's what a session zero boils down to Get all the details, what you want, what you don't want, and start building your characters. Start building your people. Create those wonderful, wonderful people and let them interact with each other. Mm-hmm. And one last thing that I, I want to say on this topic is that there's also a variety of ways to have this session zero, right? Yeah. There's, we've talked kind of a little more specifically about sitting down in person and doing it as a group. I don't play in person, but even when we do our session zeros, we kind of do them over chat the same way that we would play a regular game. Exactly. But, you know, like I said, we also keep an ongoing Google Doc of like plans for a campaign and lots of mm-hmm. stuff is written down in there. So our session zeros are happening for months. Yes. You know, it's it's sort of a long form session zero kind of process. Mm-hmm. So definitely do it a way that works for you. If mm-hmm. sitting down for an entire session zero, like we said, time is a very finite (laughs) resource Mm -hmm. so maybe sitting down in person or even scheduling a call doesn't necessarily work for you and you can have that conversation over chat or something like that exactly Uh, do what works for you i just think that you should be having this conversation somehow it doesn't matter how you Mm -hmm. go about having it but it's a conversation that should be had and there's so much value there yeah and especially if you're comfortable with it have it open with everybody that's going to be at the table players and gm alike Because Mm -hmm. you never know when one of your friends is going to have some really brilliant input into something that you want to do. Maybe that'll make a better story. 
Yeah, I feel like you hear that in a lot of our episodes, too. Mm-hmm. Somebody will suggest something and you're like, oh, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And you want to be able to have those kinds of moments, too. Exactly. And so this is this is the beauty of a session zero is not just a lot of that like nitty gritty scheduling detail, not just talking about safety and stuff like that, but just really like, the whole goal of a session zero is to sit down and say, how can we have the best game possible? Exactly. And here are some some tools to help you do that. Here is an outline of things to kind of remember to talk about if they apply to your game. Mm-hmm. That's the whole goal here is just to like help you have an amazing time because exactly. it is a finite resource and don't waste your time having less than an amazing time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you are listening to this episode, which you wouldn't be hearing this otherwise. If you've made it this far. <laughs> if you've made it this far. If your group doesn't listen, let them listen to this episode before the next session zero because they might be able to glean some stuff from it that uh, may have passed you up. So that way everybody is just as educated going into these really, really amazing sessions to create the best game possible. I've gotten so much feedback from our Eat Kinds of Fun episode, our Voices episode, how much it has helped everybody that has listened to it in their group at the table. Yeah, that's my favorite when we get feedback and people are like, oh, I've, you know, I've made the other players at my table listen to this. And, you know, like if you are a GM or if you are even a player in a game and other people are like not super enthusiastic about having a session zero and they're like, I don't really see the point. Let us let us be the bad guys. We will explain it and we will tell them (laughs) what's what you send them my way and I will have words at them. And those words are this episode. Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> and we will like let us let us explain it because we just spent a really long time explaining it so you don't have to <laughs> exactly it's just for everybody take into account that what we say on these character evolution cast episodes is to help you become a better player to help your game masters understand the roles of the player better And to let every single person at your gaming table have a heck of a lot more fun Mm -hmm. playing these games that we love so much. Right. And I think that, yeah, I mean, I feel like this episode highlights everything that we are trying to do with our podcast, which is why Ryan and I felt like we didn't necessarily need a a guest for this episode. Mm -hmm. We've clearly filled our time. But it's basically a session zero is everything that we are trying to do. It's trying to build great characters and tell a great story and have a really good time and just like have the best experience possible. And a session zero is a great way to start that. And I, I think the last piece of advice that I, I want to give is to tell players, ask your GM for a session zero if they're not planning one. Because that is, again, fully within your right. You are here to have fun and play a game and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to ask for that, too. If your GM doesn't have one planned, having one is not on them. It's you can you can say what you want, too. Mm -hmm. So seriously, try it out. That's my my advice. Try it out. See, see how much better. See how right I am. (laughs) (laughs) You'll see. You'll all see. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I deal with, people. It's all. Oh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> no, I love the enthusiasm. I am 100% in agreement. At the very least, if you try it out and you don't like it, at least you tried it out. So, Ryan, do you have any last words of advice for people? No, I think we pretty much covered everything. And we're going to be getting into the, the meteor safety topic next time. And Mm -hmm. I think these two episodes combined will give you an absolutely amazing session zero if you go ahead and follow the suggestions. Absolutely. And like I said, we'll keep kind of working on our our living document of session zero ideas, but we'll put a link to that in our show notes and we will tweet it out on Twitter so that you guys can see it. I know we've shared it in our Discord before. It's hopefully you guys will find it to be a valuable tool because we've solidified everything that we've talked about here into a document mm-hmm. that we you want you to be able to use to help plan stuff so exactly we will have that available for you too if you if you liked some of the stuff that you heard here and you want to kind of incorporate it in your in your own game mm-hmm. all right well thank you everybody 
thank you for listening to Ryan and I goof off for a long time. I'm not going to say how long because I don't know how much I'll edit. But... X number of minutes. <laughs> but we will be back next week with, with more Session Zero nonsense. But stay, important nonsense. Yeah. Stay tuned. And until next time, go out there and make some amazing people. Bye. Bye. Character Evolution Cast. Like Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even find some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. This episode was edited by Amelia Antrim. Further information for today's guest can also be found in the show notes. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Adventure. Adventure is an actual play podcast that focuses on the fun of fan fiction and is set in your favorite fictional universes. Join host Paul. <laughs> Join host Pranks Paul as he takes a variety of guests through self contained stories featuring Harry Potter, Pokemon, Animorphs, and other favorites. <laughs>